Okay guys, I've made two videos on market context and both of them had either too much background noise and then one of them, the audio, audio didn't work. I have no idea why. So I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So I've shooting, <laughs> one was 12 minutes long, one was 14 minutes long. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get this market context video done once and for all and everything's working this time. So let's talk about market context. And what I mean by that is, you know, we have the M pattern, we have the W pattern as primary trade setups, we have the trend following setup, and now I've thrown at you all a four bar reversal that can be at times, in my opinion, a primary trade setup, but in general is a secondary setup. So the key is every day uh, before the market even opens, and what, for instance, this is the NQ. So let's say I'm trading the bonds or ES, NQ, YM, and so on. Those, are, those have a fairly structured time of day. We know at 9.30 Eastern time or 8.30 Chicago time, the U.S. cash session starts. The cash markets open, the stock market, and so on. So I know these indices are going to be in their prime time. They're going to have the most liquidity, the most participants, and best of all, the biggest of participants that trade that instrument are now engaged at a high level, meaning higher volume uh, levels than typical. So that's when the market is likely to have good follow through. And it, and it all goes to, I get emails all the time. Somebody will show me a setup that they worked in the NASDAQ, wonder why it didn't work. And it's like 4, 12 in the morning, uh, you know, Chicago time. It's like, why are you trading the NASDAQ at 4, 12 in the morning when it's in the middle of its range doing absolutely nothing just because you got a W pattern? That's, that's not logical. You have to trade your instruments, your primary instruments that you trade. You want to work those during their key time periods. Meaning when is the most uh, liquidity and when are the big participants in an operating. So let's, let's get into that. Let's get into what I do every day uh, as I'm getting ready to, to hit the NQ or the MNQs in the morning. Like lately I've been working NQs in my main accounts, my main prop accounts, and I've been doing a lot of take profit trader. And unfortunately, they only have a 150k account. I don't need to trade a full NQ contract. I can spray in seven and ten uh, MNQ, five sevens and tens whenever I want. You know, jumping in, in and out, in and out works just fine. So I can I can pass the challenge just working MNQs. Uh, since you only have a 3,300 daily loss limit. So today, and if you look at a video on YouTube, you'll see I nailed the high. You're going to be you know, like the cost basis is right there at the high. Well, we had a four bar reversal at the high and I was in because I'm an aggressive trader. I'm used system. I was in as bar three of a four bar reversal was forming because I saw the stall in price. So if you watch the YouTube that I put up on August 26 in the morning, talking about the Fed meeting at Jackson Hole and related, you know, my cost basis is like right here. And I've been getting a lot of emails. How in the heck did you get that fill? Was that automated? No, I just, I sprayed in some liquidity, you know, going bing, 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 you know, sell, 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 sell with M and Q's into the market as it was oscillating on bar three of a four bar reversal. And if I would have waited for the four bar reversal, I still would have made, I would have made just as much as if I got in early the way I did because I got out uh, in this area price. So if I would have stayed in and worked it a bit, uh, the trend bias stayed red. I could have done a trend following another one or two and I would have made more money. So in the end, you know, it's just like, as you get more experience with the tools, you might start entering trades before certain patterns complete. That, that's fine, that, that's a part of experience. You know, you take two race car drivers out on the track, one has a month of experience, one has three years. The guy with three years is gonna be doing turns and braking at a, a, at a more anticipatory or instinctive level than the person with month, one month of trading. So that's okay, that's from experience. 
in the end, they have to do the same things to be successful. You still have to turn in and you still have to break a certain way. You know, you can't invent your, all, your whole new way of turning in on a car that's similar to the other guy's car. In the end, you guys pretty much have to do the same thing. Just experience will, will gain you some ability to, to have a little bit better reaction. And that's what we're doing. All we're doing is reacting to patterns that the market is giving us. We go in and hit those patterns. If they're high probability, M and W patterns are definitely high probability. Reversals, high probability. Trend following, really high probability. Like, you know, hitting a trend following short at the close of that dry bar, high probability. Um, and so on. Or hitting a long trade out of morning news on a trend following long. And I was in that one. Uh, I got in here and then I added there. So uh, those were trend following. Those are, those are a, uh, those are our, you know, high priority or our primary trade setups, trend following and M, M's and W's. So before I even get into the prime time, I already know levels that I'm paying attention to. And in many of the training videos, I say, look for these pattern based trades. Some of the best ones or the market is reacting to four hour daily chart price levels. So let me toggle this bad boy off here and let's go take a look at that. Let's get that completely off the screen. Let's expand this to the full screen. Now this is a lower time frame chart, which is fine. I want to use it to show, you know, what I'm looking at each day. So the market just had a big sell off. Some of you in here had some interesting days. Well, hey, market just was very linear, had a big trend. Now it's going to consolidate. Uh, it was very nice to see how many of you hit this W pattern that morning. Got lots of emails. A lot of you guys nailed that W pattern. You're like, wee. <laughs> uh, so here, here's what I did. And we'll start on the day where we had the W pattern long. Okay, I know the market's been downtrending, had a huge bounce uh, when the European session started and the DAX started trading at 2 a.m. Chicago time. Uh, and so on coming into that morning we had some a market that was oscillating a bit but we came in in the morning there was some early selling so coming into this day uh, right around 8 30 i already know hey right around 8 30 here's my recent high and low so always pay attention to that which were the highest high and the lowest low uh, going back from my right side so if i'm trading you know, 8.30 in the morning. Let's go to about 8.30 in the morning. Well, I'll go to 8.35 in the morning, like roughly 8.34, 8.35. I know right away. This is what I do every day. You know, right coming up to the market open. Where's the market's most recent highs and lows? If I go on a four hour chart or heck, even on my 33, where, where are the obvious? Okay, I know, look at that. Ooh, there's a lot of resistance. If that breaks, what's she gonna do? She's probably gonna run a bit. Okay, so that means if, if it breaks and it's right about here and I don't have a pattern, I'd be stupid selling into it because it's probably going to have a probe and range extend. We just had a big sell off. The market's looking for support and trying to backfill some of that range. So I know right away coming into the open, I have a, I have a kind of a prominent pivot here. I know I have some resistance there. But it's, it's, it's the first level of resistance after a huge sell-off. So that resistance very likely is going to get broken soon. But I have a big V-bottom spike in the overnight session. So going into the day, that's, that's my edge of the road. My next, if I go on a 4 hour chart and look back, my next key area is right up here. All kinds of hits and miss, inability to break up higher. Push, fail, push, fail, push, fail. That means a lot. The more times it was touched... And that was in the overnight session and some of it during the day session. So that means a lot to me. So there's my framework going into that trade day. That's the context. We get into the open and the market right away gets slapped down. We go down and test. We trade just a little bit below that recent pivot. We hold. So I'm kind of sitting on my hands. But then look at that. I'm starting to get what looks like a W pattern. So I'm literally already in my mind thinking I'm buying this. 
were above the days, uh, were above the overnight session low. They probed just a little bit below the pre-market low. But if I get a W, I'm going to buy this because uh, you know, I like this that the market's not going all the way down and retesting the morning low. That would have showed a lot of weakness. And then now I have the arrow right there, and now I can get in. Now it was a hollow bar. It's not my favorite. As I see price lifting above the hollow bar, now I'm in. I want to be in that W pattern trade. Where am I looking for the market to go? I'm looking for it to go up here. Do I have a lot of distance from my entry to where price is most likely going to be attracted to? The markets are attracted to levels. They're like, let's go see where the participants held it last time and see if the participants will, will let go or no longer challenge that area. Or let's see if participants that bought down here will no longer. The, the market's always going to challenge those key levels of support and resistance because that's, you know, when you hear the term in order flow, that's where supply is at all that to a point that's accurate. Some of it is just that is the nature of price. The price is going to go where there was, uh, you know, where there was areas where the market failed, that's resistance, or the market was supported, support. So I'm in this trade and I'm thinking, okay, it's all green. Where's that market going to? Boom. Primary targets out. I'm way up. I'm already up on daily goal because I'm trading full MQs on the 250K, 300K accounts. Now, anything I get beyond that is gravy. Now, what I'm looking for here is any stalling because I've pierced through that level. Yeah, it's breaking out. I don't know how far it's going to break out. A lot of time, these probes... Uh, above a key resistance area or below a support area stall out and then the market reverts back into the prior range. So all I'm doing at this point is sitting, getting ready to let go of my last longs. Okay, I still have green bar. I have a green hollow bar. I can get out now or I can wait for red bar. Red bar close, okay, I'm out. So Great trade, way over goal. I don't have to do anything the rest of the day. Now, if I hadn't initiated a trade or had, didn't have a setup, I'd now be looking for a short. We pressed above the prior range. I like that. I like to take a whack at the market that's peaking its head above prior resistance. I've got a little bit of prior resistance here. That level no longer means anything. We broke through it. Got a little bit of resistance there couple little areas there. Let me move that up a bit. So I like this. This is an area that's a kind of the market just is at the edges of its prior range. It pressed above a little bit, made a probe, but I'm getting red bar. So if I get a four bar reversal, that's an area I'd take a shot at to the short side if I had not put on any other trade. Okay, I do have a four bar reversal right there. So I'd be getting short and I made money. The context, the market peaked its head above prior resistance. It expanded the range on the morning and then showed me some weakness. Very typical. The market's pressing the upper range, testing it out. So very likely the market could come back. They could hold it and then press and start stair-stepping this higher. Some mornings though, Institutions will come in and be like, no, nope, no selling today. And they'll pump and pump and pump. But it'll be green for a long time. You won't have any four bar reversals. And if you do get one and you get in and then right away you get a green candlestick on very strong uptrending days, let go. Don't keep fighting it. That means institutions are just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Basically buy program activity. Those days where it just keeps grinding higher. So that to me is a four bar reversal. That's a secondary trade, but with the context of the market just expanded its range. I like that, that today, that moves it up there towards a primary trade for me. So hit the W pattern. See, see the W and then the structural shift, waited an extra bar, got in, just institutions grabbed that and ran. That was about 8.50-ish in the morning. 
if I remember right, or no, about 8.47-ish a.m. Chicago time when it really